fine. I just gotta remember what the controls for this is. Hey folks, it's Grimwit from Natch Evil, and with me today is Jet. Say hello, Jet. Hello, Jet. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I guess we're doing a discussion about the new Doctor Who now that we've seen more than one episode of the guy. Yeah. Well, should we start with Into the Dalek? Um, I guess. Uh, I will warn people that, yes, spoilers ahead, fuck you, we've seen it, you should see it by now. If you have not seen Doctor Who, go watch Doctor Who. Spoiler alerts! Yay! Spoiler alerts! Alright. So that's fucking done and over with. Now that we know that we're going to spoil the show, Into the Dalek! Is it me... Or has the Doctor gotten significantly darker? Like, it's yeah. as if all hope has just left his tiny little hearts. <laughs> He's become a regular, old-school, classic who Doctor. <coughs> well, I mean, no. More like a six or a, or a little bit of a four. Well, four wasn't this bad. I mean, I'm, well, I, I loved four, but four... Four had some issues where he he didn't like the way he, what humans did to humans basically, but he wasn't oh, this yeah. bad. He was still hopeful. No, this is like a one or a six. This is definitely yeah. Hartnell or or Colin Baker. I don't era. mind it. Certainly after Russell Rusty's versions of the uh, super hyperactive puppy doctor. I wonder if you will be able to go through this entire show without mentioning how much Russell T. Davies sucked or the damage he did to Doctor Who. Let's see. Okay. Alright. Um, this no episode, we've seen, if you're a fan of classic, you've probably seen this episode before, it just wasn't with a dollar. You remember uh, the invisible enemy. Yes. Okay, okay. I... But oh god, also, no! That, also, the movie Fantastic Voyage. Both of them, yeah. The Invisible Enemy was what I was thinking of, and the Fantastic Voyage is, I think, what it was more based off of the movie, the Fantastic Voyage, than it was the Invisible Enemy. Uh, incidentally, for those who don't know and have seen, I assume we've we've passed the spoiler barrier. The Invisible Enemy is where the Doctor picks up K9 for the first time, so it's K9. worth watching. I don't know. They they there have been other times when the Doctor has been shrunk down. Remember? Oh, help me! Was it Monster Zoo or the Zoo of Monsters? Fuck, I can't remember. It was a third doctor, it was a Pertwee doctor, where the TARDIS landed inside a miniaturized zoo full of monsters from different worlds. And it was with Joe Grant as the companion. Does this sound, any of this sounding familiar? No. Hmm. I remember, uh, first of the, I don't know, the Giants. Hmm, not quite. What? Crashed vehicle offense? Where? Um, oh well. In, in any case, the Doctor's been miniaturized before. Gotta, yes, he has. Gotta admit, interesting way to explore the inside of a Dalek, though. I, I, yeah, I liked it. I, I, I kinda liked it. There's still something about the directing that irks me. I directing. don't know is what it, directing it is. directing or is it editing? Well, to me, direction and editing are both... The director should be there while the film is being edited. So it's both Not the same thing. Not yeah. necessarily. Yes, he should necessarily be there. It's his vision that he's trying to dictate. He, it's one of his responsibilities. Is, my point was... My, shut up. My point was he's not always there. Well, that's, that's certainly a failing on his part, and it means that, once again, it's the director's fault. Of course, that's what you think. I have no problem with the script. Um, I actually like Capaldi's portrayal. I, he's definitely different. <laughs> but, oh, I, I mean, we, we wouldn't want him to be like the others. We want him to be himself. But yeah. uh, I, writing, the acting, all of that's fine. The direction of the last 
couple of episodes have really pissed me off. Why? It feels cheesier than normal. It feels like a budget slash to me. No, it doesn't feel cheesy at all to me. It feels feels like a doctor. His doctor seems like, yes, he is a Time Lord, but he can get into shenanigans. And he's, he can be somewhat petty and human. Well, the, uh, the last one with Robin Hood... Oh, that, was... that that one was great, yeah. And it was all writing and acting. Can we go back to the to, uh, to the Dalek first before we head into the robot? Yeah, I guess. Robot of Sherwood. So into the Dalek. Um, I am not a good Dalek. Dalek, you are a good Dalek. Reminiscent of Eccleston's doctor when he went up against the Dalek. You would make a good Dalek. Yeah. What did you What did you think of that ending where the doctor kind of got into his psyche, the Dalek psyche, and started talking about the stars and whatnot? Um. Eh. I I understand the idea behind it. And I saw it, the ending, coming a mile away. Not that that's necessarily bad, but uh, it didn't do anything for me. I was honestly too distracted by the cinematography. That's some groovy cinematography, I'll tell you what. No! It felt cheap! I couldn't... I can't help it, man! It's, I was constantly being distracted by the bad direction. You should not care about that. You've seen so many shitty mo or, um, sci-fi and horror movies. I can look past that just to look at the story, but apparently you can't. Well, good for and you. I'm glad that... And people, young people can't look past that either. And that's idiotic and fucking petty. It's petty that one part, one cylinder isn't firing off in an engine? <laughs> it's Tom Petty. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> One headlight, yeah. Uh, anyway. Okay, okay. If I ignore the directing, which is hard, um, fuck man, yeah, in, Into the, uh, Into the Dalek is... It was good. It was... It was Doctor Who. It, mm -hmm. it wasn't incredible. It didn't knock my socks off, but right. yeah, it was good. I actually liked uh, Robots of Sherwood much better than Into the Dalek. All right, I'm gonna say one more thing about Into the Dalek, then we can move to on to Sherwood. Uh huh. Um, that part where the the he he's trying to tell the one soldier is like, don't shoot shoot that thing, just for the hell of it. Shoot that thing. Okay. And then all the little Dalek blood vessel things start destroying them. I just wanted to see if that... I just wanted to see if something worked there. That's, that was awesome. Although it was kind of like saying inadvertently, hey, jump off this cliff. Right. That... Alright. Let's talk about Robots of Sherwood. Okay, I really enjoyed Robots of Sherwood uh, sure for, for two reasons. One... We got some interesting character development from the Doctor, and we're, we're seeing that this new Doctor has kind of lost all hope. I think that's the theme of this entire season, is that the Doctor is, is I mean, where's that, that sense of wonder again? He could not believe that... Robin Hood uh, was real? Yeah, he could not believe that Robin Hood was real. Well, he, Robin Hood is a myth and a legend. And it's proved in the real world that Robin Hood didn't exist. Um, in any case, the so Doctor has been up against situations before where something shouldn't exist, but yet here it is. And that includes people in history of other planets, certainly. I think think, honestly, it's it says more about this incarnation of the Doctor than it does of the Doctor as a whole. Uh, I think Capaldi's Doctor is having trouble... I, I think a little bit of wonder has died in him. Although, he still maintained being the Doctor, 
as in he is a little childish, which he should be. I just, um, I, I like that. I like that. I like that. That seems to be the theme of the whole deal. I think the comedy works well with him. Oh, yeah. The banter was great. <laughs> um, I forgot what I was going to say. I'm oh, sorry, Thanks man. for talking over me. That's okay. No, it's not. Uh, um, it, it, my, uh, the villain of the episode, I thought it was going to be a Cyberman at first. Because of collecting a vault of gold. Not the, don't the Cybermen have an uh, allergy? Uh, That's why they're collecting it. Oh. That's why I thought they were collecting it. To get rid of it. One problem and, with... And then pouring it into the computer parts and whatnot. One problem with the ending of uh, Robots of Sherwood. Are you familiar with the term voodoo shark? No. <laughs> okay. It, or there, there's got to be a better better way to explain it. Basically, Should magical shark? magical science, I think, is the trope. Where science doesn't make any sense, it works by magic. Okay. But thanks, but it is a... Uh, to believe the show, it is a, a scientific reason. Did that spaceship run on gold as fuel? Because what use would the Golden Arrow really be if I you shot it? I thought they were just it? using the gold to make computer chips. Me too. The, chips. I thought that's what was going on too, because they had to to uh, forge it out into a pattern. It, it felt stupid. Well, maybe here's the thing, though. We're watching this on BBC America, which cuts different things for time. No, I yes. am not watching the BBC America version. I'm watching I, BBC Two version or BBC One. Fuck whatever. I'm basically getting a a uh, copy from overseas. I don't know how you're watching it. I'm watching BBC America. Oh. Ow. I look down on you for that. Okay, I'm sorry you I feel that it. way. <laughs> That's the way you said it. That's the way you Ow. interpreted it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, here's when they were... Uh, here's an interesting little bit of trivia. I don't know if you know this. Huh. When they were running the pictures of Robin Hood on a spaceship, there was a black and white picture. Uh huh. That's Patrick Troughton. I'll have to go back and look at that. Patrick Troughton played Robin Hood in the 50s. Yes, I now I definitely will have to go back and look at that. How did you find that yes. out? Yes, you will. How did I find that out? Yeah, have you just seen it? Or was that like, were they pointing that out? Oh, I just looked at his uh, film biography. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yes, I'm going to have to look at that. I, it's hard to imagine, first off, it's hard to imagine Patrick Troughton as young. <laughs> it's because every time I've seen him, he was an old man. Even when he was younger, uh, in the original, uh, God, when was that? The late 60s that he was the doctor? 60s, yeah. Yeah, yeah he was still old. <laughs> Last thing I saw him in, Patrick Troughton, was... Um, have you ever seen The Box of Delights? Nope. Based off of some book by the same name, the idea is you have a box and it has a switch, and if you push the switch, your dream will come true, or whatever. It affects reality. And he was supposedly... Uh, he played the supposed maker of The Box of Delights. He was very old, and I think that was the last thing he was ever in before he passed on. He died at a convention, oddly enough. I believe it. He was uh, at a convention, I think, in Connecticut. And he was, the next day, he was supposed, he was, during the day, he was supposed to go in the afternoon to make a speech. And they found him dead in his room uh, because of massive heart attack. Well, he lasted a while, didn't he? Like mm. a long while. Not really. Let me look. Uh, 1987. When he died. 20 to 1987. 20 to 1987, so that's like 60 years, 67 years? 67. Huh. 67. If he, God, I thought he was older than that. No. When he passed on, he certainly looked older than that. Uh, not really. Uh, 
John Berkeley uh, died at, uh, at 60, uh, 76. It would not surprise me if you told me he died in a motorcycle accident. No, he just, I think he just died at home. Nah. Because <laughs> that guy... Heart attack, he died in a heart attack in Connecticut on May 20th, 1996. The doctor's death. Let's just go through them all. <laughs> what I liked about the uh, Robert, uh, robot... Oh, Robert. Robot of Sherwood is that whole banter in the when they were uh, chained up together. Yeah, and the person in charge turned out to be Clara because she sounded the most like someone in charge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, see, I like the comedy in this one. It makes sense. It's it it it's good. Well, also, you know, the Doctor and Robin Hood, I think we're were paired off as equals, which is why they butted heads. I don't need a, a, a sword. I've got a spoon. <laughs> spoon! I'm the tick. I've got a spoon. Spoon! Troughton died at uh, Magnum Opus Count 2 in Columbus, Georgia in 87. I wonder what kind of con that was. Sci-fi con? Or uh, story con? Fiction con? Sci-fi con? Oh, it actually says? Sci-fi con? Okay, I'm going to assume that you are saying that it says Sci-Fi Con. Yes, Sci-Fi Con. <laughs> butt plug? Monkey butlers? Butt plug? Have you heard that? No. God, it's an, it's an old uh, MP3 that's been floating around the internet almost since the inception of the internet where this guy calls up a department store that they bleep out and he only uses one word when he talks to people. Butt uh -huh. plug. <laughs> So they'll say like, "Hey, how can I direct your call?" Butt plug? What? Butt plug? You what? Butt plug? Oh, okay, let me transfer you. And it's like, "Hello, this is Automotive of Beep. How can I help you?" Butt plug? What? Butt plug? Spark plug? Butt plug? Spark plug? Butt plug? What do you okay. want? Butt all plug? Right, all right, shut up. All right, all right. Sorry, I got carried away. It's a good first bit. Doctor, first doctor died in '75. Of a series of strokes brought on by his uh, disease, his brain disorder. His, uh, it's like a not enough blood going to the brain. Right. It's There's an entire fancy. TV movie about it. Yeah, heart failure. Yeah. That that really made me sad. That movie. He was 67 as well. Hmm. Yeah, that movie kind of made me sad too. Baker's still alive. He's For 80. now. He's well. He's the, he's the oldest doctor. He's 80. And he, uh, maybe it's because he was the doctor the longest on TV. I should preface on TV. Maybe because he's, maybe he, maybe he lived healthier. Oh, well, he did have an awful lot of cats. He's kind of like the male version of a cat lady, whatever that's called. Uh. <coughs> Don't say Catman, because Catman Stevens already took that name. Peter Davison's 67. Uh, 63, sorry. I've seen him. He looks 63. Actually, I take that back. Of all the uh, doctors still alive, he still looks the youngest. He does. <laughs> Baker is... Uh, Colin Baker is 71. Yeah, he's still doing uh, recordings. Great voice. He His physical appearance has not aged well, but his voice is nah, he dead got on. But he got chubby during the show, so... Yeah, yeah, well, Mel's not there to exercise him anymore. It makes sense. Fuck Mel, she's a <laughs> you know what? I think she's probably. Uh, I I personally ju just don't like Perry, but I think Mel is the least liked companion. So you don't like. Apparently, you don't like Perry. Why do you not like Perry? She's got great big acting chops. <laughs> it's about McCoy is seventy one. Is that something he actually said? <laughs> it sounds like Ooh. something Sylvester McCoy would say. What? That he's 71? No, that, that Perry has great big acting chops. But Semester McCoy was never with Perry. No, I said that. Oh, okay. Idiot. Uh, Paul McGann's 54. Look, the thing with Perry is very simple with me. And, God, every time I even bring up Perry to my mom, she says the exact same thing. What was the first thing that had... Like, in the first episode... What was the first peril Perry was in? Do you remember? She was drowning. 
She was drowning with what in her hand? A bag. A bag full of... Her stuff? And air! It was floating! Yeah, but that's not a flotation device. That, that thing could pop on your own weight. It's not, <laughs> it's not like having a, a floating piece of driftwood or something. Still, man, it's... No. What? No. Yeah! Yeah! No. Just, no. Yes! No. Yes! No. Yes! No. Yes! Butt plug? Butt plug? <laughs> Pancake? Butt plug. Hard burger sandwich. Butt plug. Ninja potato. In any case, three words, and these three words are the end of any argument of why I don't like Perry. Oh, Bag of air. That's a silly reason. I don't care. I don't like the Dalai, Lama, the Dalai Lama because he wears orange. I can hate people for all kinds of arbitrary reasons. Well, that's, that's just racist. What? Oh, you don't have... You, you got a thing against orange people? Is that what you're trying to say? No, I said you're racist. You don't like ass. Oompa Loompas? No. And why is... Then why, is, the then why is orange racist? I didn't say orange was racist, I said you were racist. Well, you're not giving me a good enough reason for that. You don't what? like the Dalai Lama. Why must we flirt like this? <laughs> so, Rob, robots of Sherwood. <laughs> so, robots of Sherwood. Um, <laughs> I liked it. Overall, I liked it. I liked it. The only problem I had with it was... The directing. <laughs> you hate everything about directing, don't you? Yes, sir. I certainly hate David Lynch. Man who knows everything. Uh, I wouldn't have done what he did. Uh huh. I, that makes so much sense. Isn't doesn't it though? No. It sounds petty and stupid. You know, I bet the director wore orange. Uh, what's the next one that's coming up? I actually don't know. I don't pay that much attention. So anyway, for the next two weeks, I've downloaded some movies. Uh, Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde. For Right. Whenever this is coming out, who knows? Um, well, if you are... Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to post this on Friday. Hello, people, on Friday morning. So Hi, Friday. 12th. Yeah. Friday the 12th. Yeah, Friday the 12th. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde from 1920. All right. Uh, then the, the next week after that is Day of the Dead. You want me to just link people? <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to do that. Well, I told you... Why I worry I don't about give a doing shit that? Why? All right, fine. That's Fuck it. That's your problem. I'm a problem. You've got nope, nothing but complaints. That is you. That's a you problem. No, it's not a me problem. It's a you problem. My channel won't get shut down for linking to your movie stream. I don't think anyone's gonna give a damn. All right. All right. All right. You're so petty. <laughs> Orange. Oh, I bet you wear you orange. Mean? You do, don't you? You wear safety orange. I hate safety orange. <laughs> so, I've been playing this game called Cactus McCoy. It's great. Hmm. You are a cactus, and you beat up guys named Enemigos. It's a flash game. It's by the same people who did Papa Louie and Papa's Burgeria and Papa's Freezeria. So do the, does the artwork also look like, um, what was it, Kids Next Door? Or whatever it's called? I have no idea. Fuck, I can't remember. The artwork looked really familiar there. It looked like it was done by the guy who did, uh, god damn, I, it must be called Kids Next Door. I'll look up, I'll look it up and post it on the video when, uh, after, right. after we're done here. But, um, the artwork of Papa Louie looks really familiar to me. Get it now. Oh, you're looking up that, the... That whole, that whole bit about the, the uh, arrow contest, which is basically a dick, uh, dick contest, a bigger dick contest. Oh, well, yeah. It's like, I've had enough of this, uses the uh, Sonic Tree Drivers to just blow everything up. Yeah, what the fuck? Again, bad science. No, that's hilarious. Oh, yeah, it's funny. But how can it do that? I, I distinctly remember in Day of the Doctor that the war doctor said, What are you doing? They're screwdrivers, not guns. Uh, dumbass, and they explained it's new uh, software. I don't remember that from it's that. The same screwdriver, but, but changing software. 
Oh, you don't remember that because it doesn't follow what I think. Uh, listen, it's the next one is listen. And it looks like a monster under the bed thing. It looks actually kind of good, really good. We will see. We shall see what we shall see. Yes, we shall. Uh, what do you think of Danny Pink so far? Um, remind me. He's the one that wants to date Clara. Oh, for school. That's all right. I'm glad well, he's not a I repeat of Mickey. Now that's bad writing. What Mickey? Yeah. I, he not he did not, he did not belong him. there. He he did not belong in Doctor Who. I don't care what anybody else says. Now I liked Mickey, but isn't Mickey's fault that Rose was a, such a bitch to him? <laughs> beg my pardon. Hang on, I gotta take a drink. No, I will not beg your pardon. You don't have to beg my pardon. I'm begging my pardon. No. I just did. You can't stop what just happened. Yes, I can. No, you can't. I'm going to be editing this video. You can't Continue stop what happened. With your thoughts. Um, sure. okay. Uh, Mickey was from the CW. Now, I know he wasn't, but he was. He was and out of place. He really kind of felt like... I, I liked the character, honestly. And I, I really felt for him. But, um... Mickey did not feel like he, he needed to be in an adventure sci-fi. He really felt like he needed to be in a heartthrob TV show or maybe a sitcom. Probably or, that's because it was the writing that made him that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you you got it there. You, you're right. Rusty and his shitty writing. <laughs> because Rose is so great and I'm Rose and I want to bone the doctor. <laughs> And we have failed the challenge. <laughs> we, no, no, we didn't. You said while we're talking oh, about an episode. Dude, I have it recorded. It's okay. <laughs> I wonder if you will be able to go through this entire show without mentioning how much Russell T. Davies sucked or the damage he did to Doctor Who. You're right. Rusty and his shitty writing. Go rapist. Meow, meow. Meow, 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 meow. Yeah, I'm finally coming up to whatever city this is that I'm supposed to be delivering stuff. God, that was a long-ass drive. Was it Asphalt? Uh, no, I'm in the UK. Da, da, Asphalt. Da, da, Asphalt. I've been watching uh, Necro VMX's Let's Play of um, Super Mario World. It's pretty good. I like him. Super Mario World. Are they are they modded? Is it a modded Super Mario? Is it a no. ROM, ROM hack? No. no. Just straight up Super Mario World. Yeah. Is that a bad thing? No, it's just weird. Most people... Why is it weird? Not everyone knows about Super Mario World. Is it really that old that people don't know it anymore? It's from 1991, I think. Hell, I'm old. <laughs> so am I. I was watching this Teen React video to the NES. I try to avoid those because I hate how teens react, but I am curious how they react. Maisie Williams seemed alright to it. 1990 platform video game, uh, Super Mario World. Weird. Alright. That's 30 year old game. I've seen worse things. I'm still watching uh, Let's Plays of Terror from the Deep. Uh, oh, X is, but that's okay. Uh, it's uh, XCOM. Retro XCOM. It's good. Yeah, well, no. it's it's very strategy. Oh, shit! Mm, yeah, I knocked right into that guy, which means he's not gonna move, which means I just gotta push him out of the fucking way. Do it! Do it! When we eventually get done with the prisoner, I'm thinking of either doing Spaced or Black Books. Ooh, both of them are very good. Whoa, 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 just crash into that. I gotta start wrapping this up, dude. At least we got to talk about two things. Uh, we got to talk about all kinds of stuff. My hatred of the Dalai Lama, your hatred of me for some reason. I there didn't we say go. I hated you. I never hated you. Dude, everything I do is wrong in your eyes. And let's face it, I'm, I'm gonna put up a counter of how many <laughs> times you contradict me. Alright? <laughs> Especially in this conference. 
conversation, it's that contradiction. It's me trying to make my state my case and make my point. And so I'll see you all next time. <laughs> Buttery potatoes. <laughs> Say goodnight, Jet. <sighs> Good night, everybody. Hug that kitten. Slap that monkey. Hey, do you have Skype? Want to be on the show? Want to argue with me about petty bullshit like the Dalai Lama's choice in color? Send an email to natchevil at gmail.com and include truck in the subject so I know it's from you. And thanks for watching.